Soil and climate have a major influence on the grape's condition, so variations occur from year to year. Grapes are picked when they reach the required balance of sugar and acid for the particular wine being made. Once the grapes are picked, they're delivered as soon as possible to the winery. Grapes are first weighed and tested for sugar, acid and temperature. They're then unloaded into a receivable hopper, whether by traditional methods or with the help of technology. Roller crushers crush the grapes, separating the stalks and leaves from the juice and skins. With white grapes, the skins, juice and seeds, now known as must, are chilled and a small amount of sulphur dioxide is added. This age-old and legally accepted practice stops the fruit from browning and losing flavours. The must is pumped through large hoses to a draining vessel where the juice is separated from the skins and seeds. The free-run juice is then clarified, which is a process of removing any minute particles of grape skins, known as solids. This is done by one of three methods, centrifuging, filtration, or cold settling. When clear, the juice is pumped to a stainless steel tank, where yeast is added to commence fermentation. With most red wines, the treatment is a little different. The skins, juice and seeds are usually pumped straight from the crusher to a fermentation vessel, whether it be an open concrete or a stainless steel tank. Yeast is now added to the juice, beginning the important process of fermentation. Half plant, half animal, the yeast cell is a miracle of nature. It eats the grape fructose, gaining energy to reproduce, which it does at a phenomenal rate. And as byproducts, it produces carbon dioxide, ethyl alcohol and heat. The carbon dioxide rises to the surface, preventing oxygen from contacting and spoiling the must. Ethyl alcohol, which acts as a preservative of the wine, is the only alcohol safe for humans to drink in moderation. Heat is the only byproduct which is unwanted. Fermenting white wine is kept cool, normally between 12 and 15 degrees Celsius, by refrigerated coils in the base of the tank. Some tanks also have insulation jackets to assist the cooling process. The lower temperatures help retain delicate flavours and aromas, which are otherwise lost in the heat of fermentation. Fermenting red wine is initially allowed to reach 25 degrees Celsius to help extract colour and tannin from the skins and seeds. The wine is then pumped through a heat exchanger to cool it down, before being pumped back over the skins. With a temperature range of 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, this cycle is repeated for four to seven days. The wine is then pumped off the skins and into a settling tank to continue its fermentation for another four to five days. Alternately, it's sometimes pumped directly into oak hogsheads to complete the last stage of fermentation there. Barrel fermentation creates an appealing marriage of fruit and oak characters early in a wine's development. Whether in a barrel or a tank, the wine now completes its fermentation. In the case of red wine, it takes about 12 days. White wine takes about 20 days due to its lower temperature. The alcohol increases to between 10 and 13 percent. The sugar decreases and the wine sheds its heavier elements. Dead yeast cells and sediment from the wine fall to the bottom of the tank. This is known as gross lees. The wine is then racked or pumped off the lees deposit into a fining tank. In order for the wine to be completely clean, clear and stable, winemakers add a fining agent like gelatine. We use various natural agents to clarify, or as we say, fine the wine. Here are two glasses of the same wine. This wine has been fine with gelatine and this wine hasn't. You can see how clear the wine becomes after gelatine fining. The wine is blended with other batches to achieve the correct style and balance the winemaker is seeking. So 50% of that pathway Chardonnay, yep. which a litre works out at 500 mils. 
This may involve blending batches from different sections of the same vineyard or from areas as diverse as Kunawara and the Barossa. And then that should leave up with about 10% of that really rich McLaren Vale Chardonnay. Okay, give that a mix and see what it looks like. Mm. Mm. That uh, wood compound's coming through pretty well, isn't it? Mm. Once blended, most red wines and some white wines are pumped into oak hogsheads, which provide additional flavours that marry nicely with the fruit characters to produce a well-balanced wine. Most red wines are matured in oak for between six months and two years, depending on the style of wine. Some white varieties, notably Chardonnay and Semillon, are enhanced by spending three to 12 months in oak. The wines can develop an appealing complexity from this oak treatment. Most white wines are not suited to oak maturation, so they move straight from fining to a stabilizing tank. We cold stabilise all of our white wines so that they won't throw any sort of crystalline deposit in the bottle once they get into the customer's refrigerator. To cold stabilise a wine we chill it down to minus three degrees in these insulated vats and hold it there for seven days. In that time the cream of tartar deposits out on the bottom just like it has in this bottle here. Uh, after a week we, we filter the wine, the clear wine off the top and leave all the crystals of crema tartar behind. Once stabilised, white wine is filtered to take out any remaining undesirable elements. Following their oak maturation, premium red wines are only given a minimal filtration so as not to strip their colour and body. Time does the same job of filtration, throwing a crust of heavier elements as the wines mature in the bottle. Time is the final secret of fine winemaking. Here, the wine has the chance to settle down. The various elements come together and age softens the acids and tannin. Some of the white varieties will be best drunk when they're still young and fresh with plenty of varietal characters, whereas most red wines will continue to improve with bottle age. The wine is now labelled and dressed for market. Some white wines are only held after bottling for a few weeks before being released. Others are stored for up to 18 months. Red wines are generally stored for a minimum of 12 months. The longer the storage, the greater the cost to the producer. So wines with bottle age understandably command higher prices in the marketplace. Let's see the whole process in summary. Grapes are picked, crushed, separated from their skins and clarified if they're white grapes and then fermented through the action of yeast. Temperature controls preserve the grapes aromas. The wine is racked from the lees, fined and then blended. Some wine is matured in oak hogsheads. Stabilizing and filtering enhances the clarity of the wine before bottling. Wine is enjoyed throughout the world, wherever people are having a good time. Like the ancient Egyptians and the Greeks, we find reasons to celebrate the new vintage. Wine is a product of nature, with deep connections in the earth and the seasons, and we enjoy those associations whenever we open a bottle of fine wine.
Oak trees, like grapes, are products of evolution. Both plants respond to the natural environment, to sunshine, rain and the seasons. As they grow, they develop complex and distinctive characters. In this film, we'll see how winemakers use these appealing oak characters to augment the complexity and flavors of their wines. Oak is made into barrels by coopers whose skills and tools go back hundreds of years. At Penfold's cooper shop in Nuriutpa, the time-honored tradition of handcrafting the barrels continues. I still practice the old methods of working. It does take a few years to uh, get the art of this technique, and it takes a lot of practice. I've been at it for 35 years, and I think I may just have got it. Oak is the favoured wood for making barrels. Not only do its flavours complement the fruit flavours of grapes in a way that other woods don't, but it's light and non-porous. Barrels present an interesting engineering challenge. How to hold wine in a wooden container with 54 separate seams. Each stave edge has a special angle. The staves are forced together slowly under heat and pressure until a ring can be fitted to hold them tight. What I'm doing here is to get the thickness of the head to fit into the groove. Uh, I do that by the time-honoured method of using the right hand and then it gets in there and then I can put it on there. But any mistake there and you've got a problem with the barrel. Fitting the head requires loosening off the top rings until the head can slot into a specially routed groove. It's hammered into position through the bung hole. Knocking down the rings pulls the head tight. The barrel is then planed to make it smooth. Finally, it's ready to be used by winemakers. Winemakers can store wine in either stainless steel tanks or in oak barrels. Both of these containers are pretty good at keeping wine in. But uh, barrels are different to stainless steel tanks because they do allow air to enter the wine slowly. It's something similar to uh, air getting in through the corks of a bottled wine. The air carries out subtle reactions with wine components which uh, give us a deepening of colour and, and a softening on the palate. And we can see that in these two wines here. This wine has been stored in stainless steel it's light in colour, has a fresh fruity aroma, but it's one-dimensional. This wine's been stored in French oak since vintage. It has a deep colour, it has a, a lovely complex nose, and a complexity that uh, we just can't achieve in the wine that's stored in stainless steel. Barrels come in all shapes and sizes. These include small kegs of various sizes, barriques, hogsheads, puncheons, ovals, and vats which have straight sides. The smaller the barrel, the more surface contact with the wine. Generally, hogsheads are the preferred barrel for premium table wine because their size maximizes the maturation of the wine and its extraction of oak flavors. However, some styles of wine demand slower maturation with less oak flavor. Here, large vessels like puncheons or vats are used. In many ways, uh, the style and the type of oak can be uh, compared with the, the difference that you find in, in the grape varieties. Um, the sites where oak is grown, uh, the climate, soils, uh, all of those factors can affect the characteristics of the oak. Um, basically, in the winemaking sense, there's, uh, there's three types of oak. There's American oak, French oak and, uh, and German oak. Um, and they all have different characters. 
No two winemakers will describe the flavours of different oaks the same way, since there are so many variables. But a common element is a sweet, vanillin oak character. American oak is also described as timber-like and sometimes smoky. French oak is spicy and citrusy, while German oak is floral and fragrant. American and German oak also display a coconut character. Winemakers find that these different oaks have affinities with specific grape varieties and use them to create appealing wines. A French oak is a very spicy oak um, and it's distinctive in that respect. It also has very soft tannins, very fine grained tannins. And for some reason, it's difficult to know why, but Kunwara Cabernet and French oak seem to go very well together. American oak is a sweeter oak. It's more vanillin in character as opposed to the French, which is much more spicy in character. And that sweetness or apparent sweetness that one gets with American oak is very complimentary as far as Shiraz is concerned. As well as American and uh, French oak, we also use German oak, uh, particularly for Chardonnay, which gives us lovely, elegant, light, coconutty, vanillin oak characters. Uh, we also use it for Cabernet Sauvignon from Eden Valley in these barrels. And it gives us a, a extra variation in blending where we might have the same wine, uh, but in three different oak styles. Putting it in German oak just gives us that extra dimension to make the wine a little bit more complex. As you can see, having a large stomach is an advantage being a cooper. Uh, but I'm afraid my friend here has got a long way to go yet. In all winemaking, the balancing of fruit and oak characteristics is important. Winemakers continually sample the wines during maturation to monitor the rate of oak pickup and to choose the correct time for bottling. Winemakers use several methods to control the rate and degree of oak integration within a wine according to its style. Some of these methods are 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock storage, barrel toasting and barrel fermentation. With the bung of the barrel in the top or 12 o'clock position, the wine evaporates and is topped up frequently. This can hasten the integration of oak flavours, adding a complexity to the wine. Also used is a method known as the 2 o'clock system. I guess Seaview has always been known for its uh, really strong fruit characters, certainly um, since the early 50s when it first came out, it's been really well known for strong varietal Cabernet fruit characters. Um, consequently, when, when we put our red wines into wood, we're looking for um, the maturation and the softening effect of that oak storage, but we don't want it to detract uh, from the, the very nice berry fruit character that the wine's got. So we use a system called two o'clock storage, which is where we fill the barrel up, we um, drive the bung in, and then we turn the barrel to, so that the bung is at the two o'clock position. The only place the oxygen can come in is through the wooden staves. So consequently, your rate of oxidation, which is your maturation reaction, is, is slower, and the oak pickup is less. Uh, the varietal fruit character is uh, prominent in the wine, and that's what we want to see of you. Toasting is another method used by winemakers to bring out certain appealing facets of the wood's characters. Bob, with those uh, the trials we did, the toasting trial, it looked like that the medium toast came out the best in the wine, so I think with these uh, barrels that we've uh, just shaven, I think we should do them all to a medium toast. No problem. Bob, uh, what we found with these, uh, these toastings, and of course while, while we're doing it, is because it's uh, opening the pores of the wood up, the wines seem to become a bit sweeter and they've got nice uh, vanillin, uh, coconutty, caramel type uh, flavours about them and I think this has been brought about by the medium toast. Usually wine is fermented in a tank and then matured in oak barrels. Another method is to actually ferment the wine in the barrel which creates an appealing marriage of fruit and oak. An advantage of barrel fermentation is that the fermenting wine draws out the oak character quickly 
while still retaining the freshness of the fruit. In time, the wine leaches the oak character from the barrel. This the barrel is approximately six years old. He's had a red wine in there, a very good claret, but the oak flavour has gone a little bit too deep. Now I am required to shave it out and bring the oak flavour back to the surface. Wood continues to be a living force in wine for a long time. The barrels are first used for the premium whites and reds, then progressively cycled through the wines with less intense fruit characters. After a number of years, they're filled with fortified wine, adding oak characters and complexity to ports and dessert wines. Basically, it's just the air going through the, um, the uh, pores in the wood, getting into the wine, slowly oxidising it, that, uh, mellows all these harsher products down to uh, uh, this beautiful liqueurish mellow style product. And speaking about the product, I think it's uh, having looked at the, the beautiful brandy spirit we have here on the nose, along with all these beautiful developed nutty flavours, the palate, that is glorious. Big, rich, rich flavours and um, you never ever spit this type of wine out. You drink it and you enjoy it. If the winemaker didn't have new oak to use uh, in this modern winemaking era, I think we'd really lose something. We'd lose a dimension in our winemaking um, that would be very hard to replace. Uh, there's some great fruit wines, but without the use of oak, we don't get that extra complexity, another dimension to the wines, uh, through barrel fermentation, oak ageing, that beautiful complexity that's developed when the fruit and oak come together and have a little bit of time in bottle. Uh, and I feel that we'd still produce good wines, but they'd be simple wines rather than complex, more interesting wines. Whenever we enjoy a glass of wine, part of that enjoyment is the flavours and aromas of the fields, whether it be grapes or oak. If a wine is well balanced, those flavours will have married into a pleasing combination in which the oak augments and supports the grape's unique characters. And so wine, carefully made and matured in oak, will continue to be enjoyed for generations. Wine is best appreciated in moderation with good food and good friends.